Let's look at some ways to pick a programming language. So here's a good way to pick a language. Whatever's cool. You ever seen that done? Um, or how about find the people that think of programming as a craft, like, oh, basket weaving or pottery making, and let them make the choice for you. That's another way to do it. Here's a personal favorite, the mafia approach, extortion. Oops, here we go. Use, the favorite, use our favorite language or we'll make you hurt. That's actually, I have seen that one in action back in the dot-com boom. Either you use the dot-com language, which will remain unnamed at this point, or we're out of here. So we caved. We gave them the dot-com language. They went, two years later, their, their companies were all history, and they came back. But we were still using the dot-com language. Or finally, just maybe you can find somebody who picks a language because it's in the best interests of the business in the project. You never know, it could happen. Now the fact of the matter is, is that the choice of programming language is not the biggest factor in the success or failure of projects. Studies have shown consistently that the biggest factors are poor requirements and poor management. However, poor requirements, poor management, and the wrong choice of, of programming language all boil down to the same thing, and that is bad decision making. And bad decision making is something that, that we don't have to live with, because decision making has been studied for decades, and there's a lot of, a big body of theory, it's actually, it's at the heart of the discipline that we call systems engineering. So I'm going, to go de I'm going to dive in a little bit into a systems engineering approach to making good decisions and then applying that to the choice of programming language, which is something I've never seen done on a, on a major project. These are three standards of systems engineering that, that you'll find out there. You find the uh, ISO IEC 15288, which is, is quite popular in Europe. You'll find the uh, uh, Systems Engineering Fundamentals Guide from the U.S. Department of Defense, and then the CMMI uh, handbook. Let's look at each of these in turn. They, they have common elements. So you'll see here, there's, you, first of all, you decide how you're going to, de to decide. You decide who needs to be involved in the decision. You identify what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve with this decision? Uh, you come up with criteria for determining whether or not you have, to, you have achieved that goal. And then you arrive at an optimized decision, not a decision that's the best for some group or subgroup or somebody, but for the entire project as a whole. Okay, the same elements are in the systems engineering fundamentals approach. By and large, there's a few extra, one or two missing. Uh, CMMI is, the, is likewise has many of the same elements. Scrambled a little bit. You have this in your notes. So if you combine this, you can come up with sort of a consensus approach to making a decision where you decide how to decide, you identify your stakeholders, you pick what your alternatives are that you're going to decide between, you develop your approach for making the decision, and then you um, come up with an optimized, you, you run the approach and come up with an optimized choice. Now, that is a good approach. However, if you now bring in the ideas, the lean principles, the principles that helped Japan, for instance, come from the point of bankruptcy right after World War II to the point of now being the world's largest auto, automaker. If you apply those to this process, you get a better process. The first thing you do, in lean, stakeholders are, are almost all important. Those are the people that are affected by uh, the decision. So we need to make some room 
and do a little more with them. So not only are we going to develop a list of stakeholders, we're also going to prioritize that list by their effect on the success of the program. And then we're going to ask those stakeholders, what do you, what do you care about? What's important to you? What in your mind makes this project a success? Now that we've done that, we can move part of strategizing down to after that decision so that we can take what we've learned from our stakeholders and use that to um, develop our criteria for making the decision. And then when we pick our alternatives, we can use what we have learned from our stakeholders to help us choose the best set of alternatives going into the decision. And that gives us a, what I would call a lean systems engineering approach to making this decision. So let's go through the steps in the process. First, how do we decide? Well, first thing we do is we decide that we're going to make the decision of what programming language that we're going to use on business criteria. And that's uh, actually a fairly rare uh, point of view. <laughs> then we commit to do it objectively. You know, you can still have subjective arguments about business. Well, I think this will help our business more. Well, no, I think that'll help our business more. Well, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Well, I'm higher in the organization than you are, you know. And so it goes. Uh, so we commit to do the, the decision objectively rather than based on opinions or personalities. Uh, in this case, we've decided to use uh, well-vetted, well-understood objective processes. And then you, you let the decision go where it will. You don't second guess it. You don't try to game the system. You let it go where it will. Step two, identifying the stakeholders. Well, first of all, you come up with a list. Who, who can affect the, the uh, success of this project? You prioritize them. Now, this is from a project I did, a, a consulting um, a project I did for Lockheed in the UK. I won't say who the customer was, and I've sanitized the names there so that I'm not letting anything out. Uh, but the categories are there. It was a very interesting project, very political, uh, most complicated uh, set of stakeholders I've ever seen. Uh, we, uh, government was involved, layers of uh, corporations were involved inside, outside the, the project, uh, the public, uh, various other users and customers, all involved. So we brain, brainstormed, we sat down with the entire you know, a cross-section of the entire project and brainstormed who is affected uh, or affects the success of this project, who determines whether this project will be a success. And these were the, uh, these were the folks we came up with. And then we ran a technique I'm going to talk about in a minute to come up with these figures. And, and interestingly, this is what happens when you commit to take an objective approach. We discovered that the most important stakeholder for the success of the program was a consultant to the customer. If we could please the consultant, the customer would be happy and all sorts of other people would be happy. You know, totally counterintuitive, but that's what we discovered. And so you can see that now we have an idea of not only who determines the success of the project, but how important they are to the success of the project. <clears throat> 